Ah. Hello, hello. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Back again. It's me, Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and this vision of beauty. <laughs> also intelligence. Nisha Salas Hyphenberry. Depends on who you ask. Registered nurse, certified breastfeeding consultant, certified health coach, <laughs> not a gold digger. <laughs> uh, that's an inside joke. <clears throat> I'm not a bimbo, but I play one on YouTube. Right, right, exactly. Welcome back. For those of you who are new, say hello to our moderators who are also our PhD coaches inside of our private community. You will know them by their blue wrench and their blue name. So they will be trying to answer some of your more basic questions in the comments chat section. Tell them hello and thank you for being here. It is so kind of them to give their time on a Monday night. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now for the next hour, we're going to be hanging out, answering as many questions as we can, quite often pontificating on a particular question uh, that needs us to go into it in more detail. I try to answer questions for one person in a way that will help many people. And that's why so many people find these Q&As so helpful is I'm not just answering one question, question from one person. It actually can help a lot of people. This is Loki, one of our rescue cats. <laughs> Say hello, Loki. Say huzzah. Huzzah. Here comes Lily. Oh, Lily's <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute. Our cat's getting some attention. So welcome, welcome. Feel free to share this with a friend, a neighbor, or on your Facebook or Twitter or whatever you use. I guess it's X now. I can't get used to that. Absolutely. So here's Teresa, here. one of our great PhD coaches. Hey, hey, hey. Here's Paola, one of our great PhD coaches. Here is Paulette, another one of our great PhD coaches. And I'll try to shout everybody out as they <clears throat> come in. What is happening over here? I, they can see us because they're talking back and talking. I don't know what's happening. My computer. Well, let me see. I you think you I guys can see in here. It's okay. Yeah, they're fine. It's beautiful me. cat. Oh, yeah. They saw the cat. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're good. Okay. So now is the time. If you have questions about diet, nutrition, uh, nutrition research, about medical conditions, medications, you can ask us questions about any of that stuff. Now, None of what we're about to say is medical advice for you personally. This is just a doctor and a nurse uh, answering your questions. You will get medical advice from your healthcare provider. Everybody up to date, everybody up to speed. Now, um, I was interviewing Dr. Sean Baker earlier today on my YouTube channel, also on Twitter and on Facebook. And if you haven't watched that, you need to watch that. Dr. Baker and I say some things in that video. Uh, it, it's probably going to get banned on at least one platform. <laughs> Maybe. And, that, and so that's why I did it on three platforms. I've also uploaded it to Rumble. Yes, I have a Rumble channel. If you don't follow me there, sorry, YouTube, just, you know, insurance, just in case. Uh, and so you can watch that on Rumble if you hate the YT. Some people do. Um, but I, I talked about something that I and a group of low carb doctors are working on, which is a parallel organization that's basically going to take the place of and do the job of the American Diabetes Association, who is currently not doing their job at all. This is in its infancy. Yes. I don't even know if you yes. can say infancy. It's still in yes. utero. <laughs> we've got the we've got the the website. We're working on the 501 five hundred three C three paperwork. And we have a tentative uh, logo design, which I just posted inside of our private community. So they get, they're going to get to see this the entire thing happen step by step, all the stages they get to, to, to have inside access to that in our private community. So they know what the logo is going to look like. Maybe. It's yeah, it's tentative. But uh, so if you would love to see this American Diabetes Society, the ADS, that's what it's tentatively going to be called. And it's going to actually give diabetics useful nutrition advice and useful recipes that will actually improve your diabetes or reverse it altogether. So the ADS is going to help type 1 diabetics have a normal A1C and keep their toes and their fingers and their penises and their retina and their kidneys and everything else. And it's going to help type 2 diabetics completely reverse their type 2 diabetes and not be diabetic anymore. That's a radical concept for a diabetes 
a society to do, I mean, don't you think? You wouldn't think so, but go Seems look radical. at their website and you yeah. will see why we would love to have this movement yeah. take place. On the American Diabetes Society website recipe page, there will not be a recipe for apple crisp that has 42 grams of carbohydrates per one third cup serving. That will not be on our website. So that's in the works. That's in the works. Lots of big things in the works. Uh, Nisha's been busy all freaking day. So if you're a member of the Proper Human Diet community, it's already great. I mean, it really is. We have so many amazing people in there supporting each other. We have amazing coaches. We have amazing doctor. And, and lots of guest doctors. And I was going to say mm -hmm. doctors, yeah. So, but... It could be better. And I am working so hard to make that experience streamlined and easy to use and helpful. You guys are going to be so happy. So if you're already in there, you're going to start seeing these changes come very, very soon. Get excited. I'm yep. exhausted. And if but you want to join us, the link's in the show notes. All right, let's do some questions. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's do some questions. Oh, let's see if I can find one right here. Kathy said she loved the doctor. I don't know what happened there. Okay. Okay. I don't know. There. She loved the Dr. Baker podcast. It was a really yeah. Good one. Yeah, yeah. I think it was good. Um, what else? Oh, oh, okay. How about the recipe for Nisha's meatloaf? That needs to be in the in the community. It's on Nisha's YouTube. It is channel. on my blog as well. It's Nisha loves it.com. Nisha loves it.com. Yeah. But that's a great idea, good. idea, Paulette. We'll put it in the in the community. All right, let's see what's going on. Let's get to here. the questions. Let's get to the good stuff, Janet. All right, she Janet. Two part question. Okay, my mom is 89 and has essential tremors. What labs do I order to have her vitamin B12, B1, B6, B3, and vitamin E check? They're actually just called that. Uh, most uh, LabCorp and Quest have two vitamin and mineral panels that you can ask for. Um, and so then how much and what type of vitamins you should take? Well, the best way for her to get the vitamins is to eat meat because meat has every single one of those in there, especially if you can, since your mom's 89, she probably likes a liver. People that age who lived back in that time, they had liver once a week. And so if you can get her to eat two ounces or four ounces of liver once or twice a week, she's going to get the, all the vitamin A, the vitamin E, the vitamin D, uh, the K2, she's going to get all the B vitamins from meat. That's where those vitamins come from. I'd much prefer she get them from there than from a supplement. And then Janet part two, my uh, also has right and left bundle branch block. Stress test showed inferior wall infarct, and that's probably what's causing the bundle branch blocks. <coughs> Electro physio consult says no pacemaker. Echocardiogram showed leaky valves. It, any recommendations? Yeah, she needs to eat a proper human diet and slowly but surely uh, increase her daily activity level and uh, eat salt to taste. Salt is not bad for her heart. It's good for her heart. She needs to eat as low carb as possible. The heart muscle cells actually are able to burn ketones more efficiently than glucose. Her heart will actually beat better when she's in ketosis. All right. Now. Steve, should I take cholesterol meds? I have plenty of YouTube videos about cholesterol medicines and about elevated cholesterol and elevated LDL cholesterol. I'll give you a little hint. My total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol are high. I don't take uh, any cholesterol medicines whatsoever, and I never will. Navy vet with type 2 diabetes currently, Steve. If you watch all my YouTube videos about type 2 diabetes and apply what I say, you will reverse your type 2 diabetes back to normal within three to nine months. You're welcome in advance. Thank you, Rob, very much. Also, let me say that any uh, super stickers, super thanks, super chats that you guys give tonight, all of that is going to go towards the creation of the American Diabetes Society, which will actually give good nutrition advice and offer good recipes for people with diabetes. Jan, 63-year-old female, ideal weight, keto carnivore since 2020, drastic lab changes in one year, trigs from 54 to 168, uh, HDL from 78 to 85, LDL 188 to 942, A1C went from 5.8 to 5.5, other labs normal. So you, you may be a lean mass hyper responder, did maybe, 
did you fast for 12 to 14 hours before you had this last lap draw? If not, that may be why your triglycerides are high. Also, uh, if you fasted too long before your labs, if you don't fast long enough, either of those things can make your triglycerides go up. Your A1C is going in the right direction. Uh, your LDL cholesterol is super high. That's what makes me think you might be a lean mass hyper responder. If you don't know what that is, uh, go to Dave Feldman's website, cholesterolcode.com. Julie, American Diabetic Escondicide. I think she meant to put society. I think she got tripped up there. <laughs> thank you, Julie, for the donation. Nisha knew what you meant. Yes, thank you very much. Thomas, cholesterol total 283, HDL 62, trig 69, LDL 203. My partial numbers per the lab were... Yeah, I don't care about particle numbers or sizes. I don't, I don't think they're super important at all, Thomas. I think they're still experimental in nature. Uh, after more research and just more years of using them, we may come to the determination that particle sizes and numbers are a big deal and we need to pay lots of attention to them. Currently, uh, all the research I've read makes me think that the only two numbers that I care about in all this is your triglycerides, which are great at 69, and your HDL cholesterol, which is great at 62. If your A1C is also normal and your fasting insulin is also normal and your HSCRP is also normal, congratulations, you're healthy. Real quick before we go any further, just so everybody knows, the ADS ha is having a board of directors. It's not just this, no, no. this ugly mug no, over that's here. That's right. It's going to be a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. A collective board of directors who make decisions collectively it's not just him just so that's you guys right. know that's right that's right it's going to be a big thing that's why it's going to take a yes. long time it's going to be directly in competition with the american diabetes association and i predict uh because you know it, uh, dr baker said in our interview he said results get attention people like good results and when, when people follow the ADS and their A1C goes back to normal versus people follow the ADA and their, their A1C gets worse, I predict that either the ADA will change their tune, which will be fine with me, but they've had long enough to change their tune. They've been doing this since the 1940s. They don't want to change. They very I mean, often block comments. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Bob, their medical spokesman, they have a YouTube channel, and he, was, he did a YouTube live just like this. And I was going to leave a comment and invite him to come on this channel for an interview. And they had turned the comments off. You imagine if Nisha and I were live right now and the comments were turned off. How could we help anybody? Just make things that make you go, WTF? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said he's not ugly. Y'all get a sense of humor. Okay, please. I'm Mary Jim. You think I think he's ugly? <laughs> Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you. Uh, RJG have been on carnivore for a month and a half. Glucose improving down to 140s instead of 200 plus, but still have diarrhea. Worried it is lasting too long. What are your thoughts? Most people, if they're going to have diarrhea from switching to carnivore, it lasts anywhere from three to 14 days. The fact that yours has lasted longer than that, you probably need to touch base with your primary health care provider and say, hey, I've had diarrhea for a month and a half and tell them any other symptoms you might be having. There are many things that can cause diarrhea over and above a carnivore diet. And carnivore diets don't cause diarrhea for a month and a half. There may be too many electrolytes going on. There may be any number of things going on that could be causing your diarrhea. Ebony, mom is in her late 70s and with hypertension, uh, HLD and type 2 diabetes currently, wants to try carnivore but afraid to stop her pills. Well, she doesn't have to stop her pills up front. She can just slowly convert to a carnivore diet over the next month. Uh, she can start going low carb and then keep going and get, get to keto, then ketovore, and then carnivore. Also, keep in mind, she can reverse her type 2 diabetes and lower her blood pressure on keto or, carn or ketovore. She doesn't have to go all the way carnivore if she does not want to. Sister also interested but has no gallbladder. Yeah, she can do a proper human diet as well. We See have, that? Go ahead, baby. We have several coaches in the group uh, who have done keto keto or carnivore with no gallbladder and they really help a lot of people in there because there's so many people who yep. don't have a gallbladder that was a really yep. popular surgery for mm -hmm. well it still is often times for no good reason so yep. you can do it you might need a little guidance and mm -hmm. we have really awesome people to help you 
Absolutely. Carl, can an 80 year old man with long term type 2 diabetes on insulin for years reverse it and halt injections with a proper human diet? If in fact, Carl, you do have type 2 and the way you'll know if you have type 2 or type 1 is to get a C peptide checked because you inject insulin, you cannot check a fasting insulin, but you can check a C peptide. And if it's zero, you're type 1, you're going to have to inject insulin. But if you go keto or carnivore, you can use 80% less insulin than you're currently using and have less high blood sugars and low blood sugar episodes. If you are in fact a type two, then you can slowly can lower the carbs in your diet as you go from low carb to keto to ketovore to carnivore and lower the, the carbohydrates you eat each day and lower the amount of insulin you're using. And it won't be long at all before you're not using any insulin whatsoever. And in three to 12 months, you'll have a normal A1C. And then you can teach your doctor because your doctor obviously doesn't know how the hell to treat type 2 diabetes, must be taking recommendations from the ADA. Gaia Helper, Dr. Barry, what would you do to help yourself in addition to going carnivore if you had scoliosis of the spine? Uh, thanks for all you've done. So definitely I would go ketovore or carnivore and stick there strictly. I would start working out all of the muscles that attach to my spine. And many doctors tell people with scoliosis, now you can't be working out. You can't be, you don't want to lift stuff. Uh-uh, bad advice. Now I'm not saying go and try to deadlift 500 pounds the first day. No, no, you're going to start low and you're going to slowly increase the amount and the intensity. But yeah, the, the stronger you make the muscles around your spine, and there's lots of them, the less severe the symptoms of your scoliosis are going to be. You might even be able to slow progression of the scoliosis with a proper human diet and uh, wise, smart working out. Yes, <laughs> what do you got? Tiffany said, did the medical field fire Dr. Tim Berry? And I responded, no, he fired them. And then K-Girl's mom said, no, Dr. Berry fired them. <laughs> Yep, yep. But no, that's exactly right. When you are constrained by a, what is it called? Standard of practice. Standard of care, yep. Standard of care. Then when you are an outlier, like Dr. Kim Berry, some people don't like that. Now, he does still have his license and he sees some patients, but we're not taking new patients. Um, but that's just goes to show you exactly why the ADS is such an important thing. Because why would you not want to help more people? Why is that a problem yeah if you're getting results for people yeah the american diabetes society is going to be completely crowdfunded it will be funded by you it will never ever take a penny from kellogg's or mandalas or kraft Heinz or general mills or post they can all pack up in a little studebaker and go straight to hell <laughs> okay um, we would love to work with um the i can't ever remember dave's Oh, um, the, the, um, uh, right. right. We, we have full intentions working with Rivero.com. <coughs> Rivero.com. We have full intentions of working for the society, uh, with the society of metabolic health practitioners. We will work with Dave Feldman's group. Um, yeah, it's I blanked. I can't remember what Citizen it was. I'm sorry. Science Coalition. Citizen Science Coalition. Right? Yes, we're going to work with all those guys. But if Pfizer or Merck or Eli Lilly or AstraZeneca, if they reach out and say, hey, we'd like to give you guys $500,000, but we need you to kind of ixnay on the low carb A, I'm going to smile and say, oh, my God. Yeah, that's what that's what the American Diabetes Society will say to Big Pharma if they try to buy, buy us off. They can jump in the Studebaker with the big food boys and go on a little road trip. Amy, my friend Teresa wants you to know, wants you wants to know to. if you are wearing contacts because you haven't been wearing your glasses. I do have contacts. Uh, I sometimes wear my cheaters, and, but often I don't. Uh, but yes, I do have contacts. <clears throat> Oh, I don't think we got Michelle. Did we? Uh, I had first blood work after being uh, keto carnivore for seven months. HDL 83, LDL 133, Trig 70, uh, A1C 99. Mm -hmm. That's not right. No, that must have been your fasting blood sugar. Uh, fasting glucose 92, so I don't know what the 99 maybe is. Maybe 9.9. Uh, maybe, and then fasting insulin 11. 
I've lost 25 pounds, but weight loss is stalled. Is my fasting insulin high? Still a little higher than I'd like for it to be, Michelle, but I don't know what it was three or six months ago. That's the thing. So what I want you to do is, is keep as low carb as you possibly can consistently each and every day and recheck your A1C and your fasting insulin and a lipid panel and an HS CRP in three months. And then you can compare to these numbers because your HDL and triglycerides look great. Your fasting insulin is not terrible. I guarantee you it's better than it used to be, but we really want it to be under 10 and want that A1C to be under 5.7. You're moving there. You just got to be, be consistent. Take a daily dose of vitamin P. I got to make a t-shirt. You know what that, you know what vitamin P is? Pishos. Some old patience. Yeah. No idea. Is that a real song? I think so. Is it? I maybe made that up. I don't know. Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Amy. I already answered that. We got Amy Sue. Go. I have uh, PV, uh, Jack 2 Plus, also type 2 diabetes currently. Uh, is carnivore safe for me? Absolutely. 100% yes. You can eat anywhere on the spectrum of a proper human diet, and that includes low carb, keto, ketovore carnivore lion diet you can you can pick any of those options and they're going to lower your a1c and improve your type 2 diabetes now the lower carb option <clears throat> that you pick and can stick to the quicker your type 2 diabetes is going to go away i'm on month number two lost 15 pounds and i don't want to go back yeah exactly that's the beauty of a proper human diet once you've done it for a month or two you're like i'm never going back Hold the phone. Okay. For a okay. Uh, okay. First of all, thank you, Jenny, so much for the contribution. Second of all, uh, I know Dr. Barry said every cent is going to, and it will, but just so you guys know, YouTube does take. Uh, that's true. They take 30%. 40%. Yeah. It's a kind of high percent. So if you want to wait till we get an official page mm -hmm. with a crowdfunded that we're 100% goes, then right. like, keep that in mind if yep. you want 100% to go because YouTube takes our cut. And, it's and then if any of you guys have more money than you have cents and you want to give a big donation, but you need it to be tax deductible, then wait a month or two until the 501c3 nonprofit corporation has been approved by the federal government. That's just one of the steps. And then your large donation will be tax deductible. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, keep that in mind because that I want mind. you guys, that's so, you guys are so generous. I don't want anybody to just be like, and it not all go to where it needs to mm -hmm. go. So, yeah, but every penny that I get is going towards the ADS. Rod, your thoughts on leaky gut and seed oils more easily, easily going directly into the bloodstream, causing acute reaction and inflammation. So it's not just the inappropriate fatty acids in the seed oils that are able to cross through the leaky, that should be tight junctions, but they're loose junctions because you have leaky gut. But also many of the amino acids found in plants are non-essential and non-mammalian amino acids. Some of those can get through the leaky junctions as well, and that can cause a huge uh, autoimmune spike or just an inf inflammatory response. And so, yeah, anything that you're eating inappropriately can get through the leaky gut, the, the gap junctions. Uh, and as you lower the carbs and get rid of the inflammatory foods, your tight junctions are going to become just that again, tight junctions, and they won't let things through. Things will have to go through the epithelium of the, the cuboidal epithelial cells like it's supposed to. Lana? Doctor said I have artery disease and the blockage is scar tissue. Any suggestions? Yes, adopt and stick to a proper human diet, either keto, keto or carnivore. Slowly but surely increase the intensity of your daily activity, meaning that in a month from now, you're going to be stronger than you were and you're going to be faster than you were, whatever that currently means to you. And then keep doing that. And your uh, heart arteries, any artery can actually slowly but surely remodel. Okay. A lot of doctors don't tell you that, but you, you're not, you can't expect it to remodel in a good way if you're eating a crap diet and laying on the couch all day. Right. HM, thank you very much. 
Rhonda, thank you so much for recommending oxbow. It has completely changed my life. Can for some people. Anybody with no gallbladder, uh, sometimes you need an oxbow supplement. Now, notice I said sometimes. And not forever. A lot That's of people right. have to use it in the beginning, and then later on they, they don't adjust need it. it, and they don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, we have coaches. Teresa is one of the coaches in our community who has – thrived with no gallbladder so if you're interested mm -hmm. and you are in the community and you didn't know that now you know who to go talk mm -hmm. to ashley no question just thank you and love you both we love you too ashley absolutely we hope you're doing well uh partner dean do the ads yes absolutely do the ads it's going to happen hm i have schizophrenia my semester starts next month i started the carnivore diet on the 16th should I continue to incorporate vegetables to get rid of brain fog and fatigue? I've never seen any research that that proves that eating vegetables will help brain fog or fatigue. Uh, now, a very low carb ketogenic diet puts you in a state of ketosis. That's going to help your schizophrenia. OK, not everybody with schizophrenia or other mental condition needs to be carnivore. Some people can do high fat keto and, and their mental health improves so much. Uh, at Dave Feldman's conference in Las Vegas, there was actually a, a, a testimonial from a young man who had mental health problems that were so severe he could not even complete his undergraduate de degree. He couldn't keep a job. He went keto, uh, meat heavy, high fat keto, and now he's got a job. He's got a girlfriend. He's completing college. He's just a normal guy now in his 20s, whereas before his family thought he was just a complete screw up because he couldn't do anything right. And so I would say high fat keto, high fat ketovore or high fat carnivore HM, which whichever one you're like, yes, I can do that and stick to that. That's the one you need to pick. And also uh, look at some interviews with Chris Palmer. Chris Palmer, Dr. Yep. Berry has done one on his channel, mm -hmm. but he's been on many channels. Yep. So just listen to him as much as you can. Or if you're a book person, he has a book called Brain Energy. Absolutely. Highly recommend. And Dr. Georgia Ede, also a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. has a book called it was sitting right there, and now it's not it's anymore. I don't know. Uh, what is it called? Uh, change remember. your diet, change your mind. Change your diet, change your mind. Georgia, Dr. Georgia E. E D E. So do some reading or do some listening. They're both audibles. Uh, Andy says yes to the ADS. I love it. Mr. Stu, do you recommend uh, Clinop Tillolite Zeolite powder and diatomaceous earth food grade powder? No, you, there's no need for that unless you think you have parasites. In which case, you could use some food grade diatomaceous earth. Uh, P.S. I paid for this yesterday. Not sure if you got it. Yesterday was oh, Sunday. I didn't do a live yesterday, but um, yeah, only if you think you have parasites and you can't go to the doctor and just get him to prescribe you the Vermox, which is a pill you take one time that's going to get rid of all the parasites. Um, you can use diatomaceous earth, but these two things are not magic. There are so many things out there. It's like, oh, this is magic. No, there's no magic, my friends. There's just physiology and biology. And if you honor them and listen to them, your health will improve. But if you waste your money on magic and don't honor the biology and physiology, your health will suffer as will your pocketbook. Judy, Ketovore for over a year. I love it when they use the French spelling. Ketovore for over a year, reversed all illnesses except Hashimoto's. And this is the case. Some people's Hashimoto's will get better. Some just stays the same. 59 and had for 20 years, taking 75 of uh, milligrams of iodine a day and 60 grams of armor. Uh, got a good doc, but my labs never seem to be right. Yeah. And so uh, 75 milligrams, that's that's quite a bit of, of iodine. That's even more than Dr. Brownstein recommends. Uh, more than I recommend, and 60 gram. I think you meant 60 milligrams of armor, uh, which is not a bad dose. You may need 90, you may need 120, you may need 30. Just keep working with your doctor, see them every six weeks, get labs drawn, revisit your symptoms, which are just as important. Fixing to say. You're fixing to say that symptoms are just as important as the labs. Don't let a doctor ignore your symptoms. Perhaps more important. Mm, perhaps. Your labs can be normal and you feel like crap and your labs can be a little wonky mm -hmm. but you still feel pretty good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always include yep. your symptoms if you guys haven't already done so please hit the thumbs up or the heart and leave a comment uh we got 4600 watching this let's get that up to 5000 is this live on those other platforms we're live on all three platforms wow. absolutely 
Uh, Jennifer says, surely the American Diabetes Society will face pushback. Sure. You think? Yes, you're exactly right. Uh, think about how we can help with our A1C successes in sending in medical reports, testimonials. Exactly. What this Jennifer is said. not only is this going to be crowdfunded, this is going to be crowdsourced. This is going to be, this is everybody's ADS. Okay. This is not just going to be me and the board of directors and y'all shut the hell up and we're going to tell you. And that's not how this is going to run. Uh, big Farmer is going to have no say in this. Big Food's going to have no say. You guys are going to have all the say. And so, yeah, at some point when we cut into the profits of Big Pharma enough, oh, they're, they're going to they're going to call out the headhunters and they're going to call out the hitmen. One hundred percent. I'm ready for that. Bring it. Let's go. Check your pulse. Sorry. If you can't that. find him tomorrow on YouTube, you can go to PhD Health Doc Community. That's where we are. Yeah. And no one can take us away from there. <laughs> That's ours. The, we own the it, ADS so. will be making a positive improvement, a benefit for diabetics. We will, we're not interested in helping Splenda sell Splenda. We're not interested in helping General Mills sell Cheerios. That's not our goal. Okay, our goal is to help you achieve a normal A1C and to protect you from all the complications that come with diabetes with an A1C of 7 or 7.5, which the ADA recommends. Yeah. So, yes, we want, we want help from all you guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Pam, Patty. very much. Oh, oh Patty, I'm Patty. sorry, you're right. Oh. Marion for the ADS. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Mary and Deborah. Deborah. Thank you very much. I Amy. Love some nurses on the panel mm -hmm. as well. So We're going to have registered dietitians. We're going to have uh, diabetic educators. We're going to have registered nurses, BSNs, We're, uh, MSNs. We're going to have the full game. Registered dietitians, did you say? RDs, yes, 100%. Yes. And that's, guess what? Low carb aware registered dietitians or who's that's who's going to be making our recipes and approving our recipes. And actually you guys can send in recipes. You, that's something you can do. And then our registered dietitians will look over them and go, yep, that's a great recipe. Put it on the website. And then every diabetic in the world will have access to your recipe. Again, this is in conception. Yes. Concept it's, coming. it's just right. It's here. as good as done. It's a there's so many moving parts, and we want to do it the right way. Yes. Jump through all the legal hoops, and there's a lot of legal hoops. There's a lot of, okay. lot of hoops, we and that's fine. We have some lawyers we're lined up talking mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. make sure this is all very kosher. Yep. Because that immediately, that's where they're going to go. Like, sure. Did you even do this right? That's right. Exactly. And we're going to be ready for all that. We have an excellent attorney already working on this. We've got a, We're in consultation with it. One's in Texas, the other's in New York. Uh, in consultation with that attorney, we've got we're we're dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's, and slapping all the booties. We're not going to leave any stone unturned. Thank you guys very much. It was an interesting car that you drove. Nicole, <laughs> please make a video about the best feed for chickens to get the highest quality eggs. So I can tell you that right now. Uh, you need two or three acres per five or ten chickens, and you need to let them out and let them free range. Let them eat bugs and worms and larvae and seeds and grass and weeds. That will make you the most nutrient-dense eggs on the planet. There is no feed that you can buy at any feed store in the world. Well, I mean, you can, but it's super expensive. It's called mealyworms. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah, but now then it matters what the mealyworms are fed. Right. Okay, but like. Come right, on. right, right, right. That's right. Crazy. That's right. Okay. But just let your chickens go outside and play and live a chicken life. They're going to make you beautiful, delicious, nutritious. Of course, you eggs. risk them getting run over. That's right. You got to have a By fence. A hog, then you got to have a dog. A coyote. That's right. Then you got to have an electric fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> do the best you can. Yes. Just like with everything else. Okay. Robert, twenty-nine-year-old male, one hundred and fifty up from one thirty-six, seemed to have stalled the last two to three weeks. Is five eggs and one pound of beef a day enough protein for more gains so you you didn't tell me how tall you are but you've already gained 14 pounds so i'm guessing you're working out pretty hard uh you could absolutely eat more protein than that uh there's no reason that you couldn't eat two pounds of beef a day and, and five, 10 eggs now if you eat more protein than you actually need that's not going to help you build muscle faster but it is going to ensure that you're eating as much protein as you need to make the gains if you really want to go chat with somebody uh robert sykes does a live stream on youtube facebook yep. and instagram i yep. think on 
Wednesdays at five. Keto Savage. He, that's his Keto handle. Savage. Yeah. Uh, and that's what he does. That's right. He That's eats he meat does. and lifts weights, and he looks pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. mm. He competes uh, professionally and has won multiple times in his in life, In the natural too. Yeah. competition, yep. He doesn't do any of the juice. Yep. Destiny, Mr. and Miss Barry. I am 24, stuck at 115 pounds, tired all the time with PCOS. Very dark, hirsutism. How can I get my youth back? Mm -hmm. So it is possible to have severe PCOS and not be, not be obese. That can happen. And I, I think you already knew that, Destiny, but some other people didn't know that. You've got to slowly start to cut the carbohydrates out of your diet and increase the amount of fatty red meat that you're eating, the amount of eggs with the yolk that you're eating. Uh, this is the, your doctor may have told you oh, this is about testosterone and, and DHEA. It's ultimately first and foremost about hyperinsulinemia, Destiny. I've got a YouTube video about PCOS that will help you. You need to get your A1C checked, your fasting insulin checked, also your hormones for sure. But realize that when you fix your hyperinsulinemia, all the other hormones are going to start to go back towards normal. The hirsutism is going to get less dark and all your other symptoms, including, I would suspect, infertility. If you're ready to have a baby at some point in the future, uh, Dr. Robert Kiltz, K-I-L-T-Z, is a fertility specialist in New York. And he recommends a high fat carnivore diet for women just like you if you're trying to get pregnant. And it'll also put your PCOS in complete remission. Back to the chickens. Yes. Something that we have learned throughout, we've had chickens for years, 10 years, years now, yeah. a long time. Um, what we have done in the summer, this doesn't work in the winter as well, but if you get the little mm. lights that electrocute the bug lights, bugs, the bug zappers, right, and yep. hang them over wherever your chickens hang out in the summer, that's free fodder. Mm -hmm. They just zap and fall to the ground. And, and then the, the chickens, next morning, they have barbecue bugs. Yep, it's a it's a smorgasbord for the yeah, chickens. They so love it. Yeah, so there's your little hack. Mm -hmm. Also, you can take sheets of plywood if you've got a yard and just lay the plywood out, buy as many sheets as you can afford, and then once a week flip the plywood over. There will be a hundred bugs and worms under each uh, four by eight plywood. The chickens will quickly learn what you're about to do when you do that, and they'll wear those out. That's that's free, and that's ultimate. Chicken egg nutrition. You can use anything yep. for that, honestly. Yep. Anything that's moisture absorbent. Or absorbent. The, yeah, the, the shades <laughs> and holes the moisture. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, where was I? We got that one. Okay, so now we're to Angie. I just uh, had a ultrasound showing gallbladder stones and fatty liver is keto mm -hmm. good for that. I've got five videos about fatty liver and using a ketogenic diet or a ketovore diet or a carnivore diet to completely reverse your fatty liver. Uh, gallstones are going to slowly shrink as you're eating more and more fat. Uh, hopefully they shrink and go away, but sometimes when they shrink, they get small enough to actually get in the cystic duct, and then that's a gallbladder attack. Uh, but yes, ultimately it's going to definitely fix the fatty liver and most likely fix the gallstones as well. Yes, Every time we get a question like this, Brett, like I, all I am thinking is I can't wait to tell them about the new thing mm -hmm. that can help them get their questions answered uh -huh. and it's killing me not Guys, to tell you again about I'm, we're it. not i'm about to we're about to tell in the our private community we're about to tell them but i'm just going to give you Makes a hint change. would you like to be able to ask me a question anytime 24 7 3 a.m my time and you're like oh i wish i should i should ask dr bear that on the live you'll still be able to ask me right then and get an immediate answer yeah, that's coming. That's coming. That's coming. I can't give you any more details. I've already told you too much. If I could get to you, I'd have to kill you all because you already know too much. And make sure we kill him also. <laughs> mm. All right. But that be looking for that. That's going to be something else. Uh, Stephen, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Stephen. Pocahontas. I am 62, have breast pain from fibrocystic. Uh, how many Lugol's 2% iodine drops? I did listen to your vid. You did about the iodine. And also make sure and listen to my interview with Dr. David Brownstein, who wrote the book about iodine. He would recommend much more iodine. I would say, I, if I were you, I would start with 10 drops of 2% a day and do that for two or three weeks. And then you can probably start to wean it down. 
Fibrocystic breast disease. Fibrocystic breast pain is almost 100% caused by iodine deficiency. I can't tell you the number of women who had severe fibrocystic breast disease, breast pain. When they started iodine replacement, uh, either following my protocol or Dr. Brownstein's, in literally a week, they're like, uh, my boobs are pain-free and the cysts are shrinking. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows that thyroid concentrates iodine. Everybody knows that. But most people don't know that mammary gland tissue also concentrates iodine. It wants iodine. And if you're not eating enough, it, they don't get enough, and you wind up with fibrocystic breast disease. Yeah. Let us know how that turns out. I hope you're in our in the private community so you can message us. Elon, Elon fanboy. Love the new association. Where can I find a primary doctor in Minnesota who is carnivore friendly? Love you guys. I don't know of any uh, carnivore friendly doctors in Minnesota. If anybody knows, put it in the comments. Yeah. Uh, this is something that our, our tribe members in the private group, they're always saying, hey, I just found a low-carb friendly doctor in whatever city and state. I just had a brilliant idea. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to write it down right now. Oh, okay. This is good. This is, should be pen. one to write. You have so much junk in your drawer. She says that with love. You have so much junk in you your drawer. But it, this happens all the time in our private group. And when somebody finds a, a primary care doctor in Minnesota, if they understand low-carb, they're going to also understand keto. And if they understand keto, they're also going to understand carnivore. That makes sense. So once you find a guy who's like, yeah, low carb keto, I get that. It makes sense. He, it won't be six months before that doctor will be carnivore friendly as well. Kimberly niece with acute pancreatitis was told to stay away from fatty foods and that red meat is the number one trigger of pancreatitis. Why is this not true? Uh, because Kimberly physiology <clears throat> OK, if you're not a physiologist, I can't explain it to you in a way that, that you'd be like, oh, I get it without you going to school for two years. But just suffice it to say that is not what causes pancreatitis. OK, pancreatitis is caused from too much of certain prescription drugs, too much of certain over the counter drugs, too much alcohol, too much of certain illicit drugs, too much fructose and sugar. Those are the causes of pancreatitis. Red meat, fatty meat has nothing to do with pancreatitis. Nothing whatsoever. It's biology and physiology. And if a doctor understood physiology, they would never say such an ignorant thing as you were told by this doctor. Uh, thank you, John, Johnny, very much. Thank you, Kathy, very much for the ADS. Yes, uh, BK Tango, thank you. Mary, thank you very much. Uh, Jenny, thank you very much for the ADS. Elizabeth, any different advice for a liver transplant recipient? Have a feeling my husband's transplant team will not be excited about keto carnivore. Now, you're probably right, but you might be surprised because more and more subspecialties are starting to understand the physiology of keto and carnivore. So it, it's possible you might have one person on the team who will go, yeah, keep doing the keto or carnivore. I know exactly why you're doing that. That makes sense. I can't tell the rest of the team yet because they're not on board. But yes, keep doing that. But you want to protect this new liver like platinum in the bank. And the way you're going to do that is to eat as low carb as you possibly can. Okay. Hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, and chronic inappropriate inflammation. Those are the three things that are going to hurt that new liver. And you don't want that. That's how you protect it. Very, very low carb, uninflammatory, proper human diet. Marie was told in a nutrition class, no money to be made in healthy people. You know, sadly, that's true. I don't. And so here's the thing. Uh, when people say they want to keep us sick, I think it's important to define which they you're talking about. The average doctor, the average dietitian, the average nurse practitioner, the average physician's assistant, they do not want you to be sick. They want to help you. They want to heal you, but they're, they just don't know how. Just like me back in 2003, 2004, I didn't know how to help you metabolically. I would have given you the exact wrong advice. I wanted to help you then. I want to help you now, but now I can actually can help you because I've done the extra reading and research. 
Okay. Now, if by they you mean big pharma, oh, hell yeah. They want to keep you just sick enough for the rep for a long time so they can, you go to the pharmacy every month and refill that prescription. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, but the average doctor does not want to keep you sick. I never heard there's no money to be made in healthy people in medical school. No doctor has ever said that to me. And no pharmaceutical rep or pharmaceutical CEO would say this out loud in public. But in the board meetings, 100%, they would say this. Yes. Maya, do calories count when trying to lose weight on carnivore? I can't see any role that counting calories plays. First of all, you can't ever know the exact amount of calories in the food you're about to eat. All you can do is have a rough estimation, plus or minus 20%. Also, you can never calculate how many calories your body actually needs from day to day. You can only come up with a rough estimate, plus or minus 20%. Or you could just eat as much fatty red meat and eggs with the yolk as you want, eat until you're comfortably stuffed, and then stop eating and let your body's natural satiety hormones and your natural physiology, let it take care of that for you. You know all those wild animals out in the, in the forest that are not obese? They don't count calories. Somehow they, they know to eat a certain amount and then quit eating. How do they know? I opine that human animals know that we can do the same exact thing when we eat a proper human diet. Not when you're eating the highly processed crap. You'll overeat every time. Okay. But if you're eating low carb, uninflammatory food that is not hyper palatable, you're going to stop eating when you're, when you're satiated. Listen to me. Yes, ma'am. Listen, listen. All right. What I'm about to say is very important. Every single thing you hear on YouTube is a generalized answer, not an individualized answer. Okay? Right. Are there some people who have a really bad relationship with food and can binge on butter bites and fat bones and bacon? And like, yes, it is possible. The mm -hmm. vast majority of people have that satiety hormone that yep. works. This is all generalized. Yep. Please know that Ken Berry, Nisha Berry, every single influencer, every single YouTube doctor generalized. You know why? <clears throat> they can't know your whole healthcare background. They're not talking to you for an hour on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. This is this is YouTube. That's you right. That's right. That. Okay. Dark Sky, thoughts on vagus nerve stimulation exercises. So I am not opposed to this. I am not anti this. But I also have never seen any meaningful research showing me that this is a real thing. So if any of you guys, if you know of research, it's like, oh, yes, vagal, vagal nerve stimulation exercises. Yes, here's a good control study. Please send it to me because I get this question often and, and I can't find any research that makes me think that this is anything other than a moneymaker for the gurus selling the program. But I, I'm happy to be proven wrong. So if you got research, send it my way, even if you're the guru. Thank you, Donald. LAC, thanks for bringing truth and hope to humanity. That's my freaking job and good health. Going to bring that too. Hippie girl, 71-year-old female, almost five months in, stage five uh, Hashimoto's. Did, I didn't know they studied no, stage Hashimoto's. No Do I need stage iodine? Two. Hippie girl, every human on the planet, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, and everybody who identifies as anything else needs iodine in their daily diets. For those of you, and I know there's somebody watching right now going, oh, no, no, I'm allergic to iodine. No, honey, no, you ain't. Okay, your doctor is wrong. You, there is no such thing as an iodine allergy. That would be like being allergic to water or being allergic to air. You would not be compatible with life. Okay, if you are sitting there right now going, you're crazy, I'm allergic to iodine. Do you understand you have iodine in your body right now or you'd be dead? Think about it. Think it through. Watch my videos on iodine and you'll understand. Mike, let's donate to the ADS fund. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Hi. Thank you, Holly. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It did work. I saw your uh, super chat earlier. Daniel, been on carnivore for three months, got off prescription depression medication, but struggle with migraine pretty bad. Any advice? Uh, Daniel, if you're still including dairy in your carnivore, I'm sorry, Daniel, but I would try 90 days with no no dairy except for butter and see what that does. Depending on how long you've been off your medication, it could be a side effect of coming off some mm, of those possible. medications yep. as well. Possible, possible. But if you're like, no, I've been off that a long time, 
It's time to stop the dairy. Jennifer, stop beta blockers due to severe insomnia. Now sleeping way too much. How long can it take for my melatonin production to stabilize? Um, it typically only takes a few days, Jennifer, for your melatonin. Uh, watch my videos on my YouTube channel about sleep hygiene and try to do try to follow every single tip and trick that I give you. I think more the more I study this, the more I think that getting out in the morning sun when you first wake up letting the morning sun shine on your face and shine into your eyes. Duh, don't look directly at the sun. I, there's always a comment. Uh, but let the sun shine on you. That's going to reset your wake cycle and your sleep cycle. And I think that helps way more than people give it credit for. And do it barefoot while you're at it. Why not? NKS, if I am having fruits, such as berries, on my proper human diet, should I give them should I have them 30 minutes or so before my workout? So you're assuming that you need those that, that sugar to power your workout. And more and more elite level athletes are powering their workouts now with ketones. Uh, there's a guy in Australia who ran a marathon a day for five days fasted. I think she may be meaning, would it be better to do that because then she would burn the Carbs. Oh, oh, like you're going to burn the carbs? Right. I mean, yeah, if you want to burn the carbs off, maybe. Uh, like, is there a better time if you're going to eat yeah, berries? Is that the best uh, time to mm, eat them? Yeah, I guess so. I guess I guess you could do that right before an intense workout so you burn them off faster. Yeah. It, or, yeah, 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 I think that's fine. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Motivational misfit. Would an animal-based lifestyle of consuming fatty meats, fruit, and honey lead to a stroke or clogged arteries due to the fructose? Too much fructose is not good for the human liver or the human arterial tree. Honey is just sugar. And now I'm sorry, everybody that just got triggered, listen to me carefully. I love you. I want only good health for you. Honey, even Manuka honey. You know that honey we saw at, at Whole Foods that was $58 an ounce? It's just sugar. It's sugar that came from a bee. It's just sugar. There's no magic in honey. Remember I said earlier, no magic. There's no magic. It doesn't do anything except raise your blood sugar and cause your liver to store fat inappropriately. It tastes great. I love honey. Oh, my God. If I can mix some honey with some butter right now and put it on one of Granny Berry's biscuits. And have no side effects. And have no side effects. I do it every day. But I know. I know exactly what happens when you eat a mega dose of fructose like when you eat honey and fruit. Mm -mm. Alyssa, Coach Alyssa, one of our coaches, she's late. Everybody get on to her for being super late. It's almost over. Where you been, Coach? Thank you, Diane. Thank you, L.A. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, <laughs> to Bob. Hey, Dr. B, Nisha, senior BP vids, uh, but can't get past high blood pressure. Some episodes of drowsy. Anything I'm likely missing that can help Carnival for six months. Six months may not be long enough, Bob. You may need to do it for nine or 12 months. Keep doing what you're doing. Also, I want you to keep increasing the intensity slowly of your daily exercise, okay? And so however strong you are now, however fast you are now, a month from now, I want you to be a little stronger than you are now. And I want you to be a little faster than you are now. Keep doing that and keep eating a strict carnivore diet. And I think you're going to notice the blood pressure coming down. My dinner ate vegan. Hey, Dr. Ken and miseries, Dr. Ken Nisha. Down 50, <laughs> 54 pounds since February the 1st on Huzzah. fatty carnivore. Labs done last week, HDL 47, LDL 89, total cholesterol 150, trig 69. I love it. A1C down to 5.6 from 6.1. Thanks. See, this is what, the, when you give somebody, with pre-diabetes, that's an A1C of 6.1. When you give them good nutrition advice, their A1C goes back to normal. See, American Diabetes Association, if you got a spy watching. See what we did there? Before Dr. Berry's advice, A1C 6.1. After Dr. Berry's advice, A1C 5.6. See how that works? And that's since February. Just since February 1. Dinner eight vegans gonna see you know I'd, better results. I'd happily if the ADA would clean up their act and get their shit together, I'd happily not do the American Diabetes Society, but I suspect they're not gonna do so because of the millions of dollars they get every year for big food and big corporations. You know, you, you guys know they have a hundred million dollar annual budget. Hundred million dollars. 
And every time you go to the website, it's like, donate now, donate now. Give us your old car. Literally, if you'd like, if you literally not joking. We buy it's a old tax, cars. yes, it's a tax deduction to give them your car. Also, if you'd like to bequeath them your home in your will, your will? literally on the ADA website. I mean, they're great at raising money. They want and, you to dig a little deeper. And they're kind of half ass at reversing type 2 diabetes. But we're going we're gonna to help them with that. We're going to help them with that. MCA, American Diabetic Association, equals an organization that associates themselves in between big pharma, big food, and diabetics. Bunch of crooks. Let's go ADS. Huzzah. Well said. Well said. Ben, I am young and ambitious health educator that has recently graduated with my degree in health education, and I'm trying to find a position working to fight metabolic syndrome using nutritional ketosis. Any helpful tips? Yeah, first of all, you've probably already done this, Ben. Start social media, whichever is your top three favorite, whether it's X, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, start making videos. OK, people like video better than they like static posts St and just pick a simple topic and say, OK, let's talk about fatty liver. Let's talk about type two diabetes. Let's talk about toenail fungus. That's how I make my YouTube videos. I pretend I'm talking to a patient and they've asked me, well, I've got this toenail fungus. How do I get rid of that? And so now my toenail fungus video on YouTube has got like seven million views. And the thumbnail is so gross. It's hideous. But. So many people read the comments. They're like, oh, my God, I thought this was bullshit. And, and a year later, I come back and I, I'm doing it and my toenail fungus is gone. See, American Toenail Fungus Association, that's how you do it. Is there such a thing as that? I don't think so. I think I made that up. But then, And so then keep reaching out to people like me saying, hey, I'd love to work with you. Hey, here's my look at my social media. I'm growing. I'm putting in the work. Because ain't nobody wants you to be your their, their welfare case, okay? You need to bring value to whoever you say, hey, let me work with you. You need to bring value and say, look, I've, I've grown my Instagram from zero followers to 12,000 followers in six months. But you don't have to reach 12,000. No, Listen that's to right. Me when I say 100 <clears throat> people, people are like, well, that's not very many followers. But if you had 100 people in the room with you, you're making a difference in 100 people's life. That's huge. It's a big deal. Don't get worked yep. up about not having that's thousands right. of followers because it's not about that. It's about helping people. And 100%. That's one yep. person yep. or 100,000 yep. people. But he's wanting to do this for a living. I so know. So therefore, but that's at some point. Okay. But we, you going to let me make my point? Make your point, buddy. Did you start this because you thought you were going to have a million subscribers and oh, make no. any money? No, 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 no not at all. Not no. at all. We no. never thought this was going to happen. I this started was... all this because she told me you, can help, more you can help more people than you help in the clinic every day. Mm -hmm. And I would say 30 or 40, which I thought was great. And she's like, what if you could help three or 4,000? I'm like, hmm. Oh. If your main yeah. mission is to help people, then you will grow. You That's will. so well said. She's pretty smart to be so pretty. I'm not sure how she gets I mean, both. I don't That's know. not really fair. I interrupt you all the time. So. I know you're so rude <laughs> and you're a gold digger. Raggedy Ann, thank you very much, Raggedy Ann. Chris, just wanted to say it's so great of you for participating in Carrie Mann's documentary. We are 100% on board with Carrie's uh, documentary, mm -hmm. Healing Humanity, PhD VIP. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Chris, very much. Vishnu, just to mess with my coach, is sunflower seed oil bad? It's quite high in omega-6, uh, quite low in omega-3s. I would never uh, eat anything that contains sunflower seed oil, nor would I feed it to my beautiful wife, nor to my beautiful children. It is not. It is not anti-inflammatory. I promise you. All the research that says that sunflower seed oil is anti-inflammatory is observational research. There is no head-to-head -head comparison comparing beef tallow versus uh, sunflower seed oil in a controlled setting. That There is no such study. Sunflower seed oil is not good for you. I think he knows that. I know. I just want <laughs> to say that. There's three people going, wait, what? I, 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 you just bought some sunflower seed oil. Yeah. Ted Rose, why chest pain from sugar, high food, <clears throat> and caffeine? Oh, this is a very easy question to answer. Yeah. If you're having chest pain, Ted Rose, you need to go to the ER right now. 
protein in case it's something very serious. Yes, yes, because sugar, uh, high sugar foods cause your blood sugar to go up, which cause your insulin to go up. And both of those things, along with the chronic inappropriate inflammation from eating the junk food, can damage your heart arteries and give you coronary artery disease. So if you're having chest pain, go to the ER right now. All right, one more question. Melody, thank you so Thanks, much. Melody. Uh, agoraphobic. agoraphobic carnivore. I love that. Can you take too many electrolytes when starting carnivore? Sure, you can take too much of anything. I'm only 12 days in, but I've had had issues with feeling faint uh, with the packets before. So what I would do, agoraphobic carnivore, is I would uh, bump up your salt intake and, and take one or two packets of the electrolytes, whatever brand you're taking. But more than that, unless you're sweating like a horse in August, you don't need more than one or two packs a day. Does that make sense? But make sure you're salting your food to taste and make sure you're not portion controlling. Eat fatty meat and eggs with the yolk well salted until you're comfortably stuffed. And I think that uh, this feeling faint that you're having will get better if it doesn't go see your doctor. Also, if you're on any medications. That's why you need to see your doctor. Yes, yes exactly. absolutely. Thanks so much for hanging out with us for this hour of awesomeness. Uh -huh. If you didn't get enough, if you'd like to be live with us again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central, then go to phdhealth.community. That's a real website. And mm -hmm. sign up and you can be part of tomorrow evening's live as well. Can hang out with other people who are doing this way mm -hmm. of eating. And you can ask the thousands of our tribe members, hey, do you know of a good low carb friendly doctor in the so and so area? Yeah, we're working on a better way to do that. Okay. Yeah. Misha really had a, I right saw now. her I brain had light. Brain, had, I saw I had it going. I had an epiphany. Yeah. We're and about we to were fix, this. fix this. Nah, that's, what I'm working on. that's what I think. That's what I think. But also, we have amazing PhD coaches in there. They go yep. live as well, and you can hang out with them. Yep. It's not one on one, but some of them do offer that. So if that's mm -hmm. something that you need, reach out to one of our coaches. Yep. Tell them what you're having, you know, problems with, and maybe they can help you. If they can't, they can send you to another coach that can. Also, every time I interview one of the experts on my channel, it's live for our private community. Mm -hmm. They get to ask questions while we're live, and then I post it later on YouTube. So if you like that ability, when I have Professor Ben Bickman on, or when I have Gary Fetke or Professor Noakes, or who knows who I'm going to have next, okay? If you'd like to be able to ask them some of the leading authorities in the whole world on the low carb keto carnivore diets, here's where you need to be. So you can ask your questions live. And if you're new to the proper human diet and you have no idea what we're talking about, you can get a free PhD guide. Click the link in the description. Just put in your email and information. We will never sell your information. We will never spam you, but you'll get that sent directly to your email for free. You can download it and print it off. Yep. Give it to a friend. Give it to your husband. Print give out it to 20 your doctor. Copies. Yes. You're free to do that. Thanks All so right, much guys, for hanging out. That's it. See you next week. See ya.